What is up everybody? So today I want to talk about the Coral Life Bio Cubes. And the reason why I want to talk about them is because they are probably the most popular tank aquarium sold, at least in my experience, the whole time I've been working at a fish store, especially for beginners, people who are just getting into the hobby. So I kind of want to go over some of the, the um, pros and cons of the tank itself. Now we have one of these at a customer's house, so we'll be headed there shortly. But first, we got a really nice fish shipment in and I wanted to share it with you guys. So check this out. So in this first aquarium, we have some Lyretail Antheus and some Chromis, and I'm gonna feed them, make sure that they're eating. Just gonna feed them some brine. Let's see how everybody's doing. Oh, they're doing awesome, they're eating. Nice, that's definitely a good sign when fish first come in. Um, we like to see that, especially when they're about to go into their quarantine phase and the medication phase. These liar tail antheus are probably the more hardy of the antheus species. So I definitely would recommend these guys. If you have a large enough tank, you know, I'd probably say about 65, you know, would probably be the minimum. You'd probably get four or five of them because they are really uh, nice in schools. And these guys are, look at how voracious they are. They're going nuts for this mice and shrimp and brine shrimp. So uh, they're all eating well. So that's good to see. And then check this beautiful pintail fairy wrasse out. Oh my gosh, he is awesome looking. And fed him to see how he does with some food. Boom, eating too. That's a great sign. Cause this is a very expensive fish and we don't want to lose it. Now we have some Bartlett Anthias over here. And put the food in. And are you gonna eat? Please eat, please eat. Uh, they just look a little scared for now. Nope, looks like they're going for it. A little camera shy. Well, the rats are going for it, so that's a good sign. We got a little couple of red fairy rats in there that are eating. So that's good to see. Yeah, looks like everybody's eating there too. And then check this out. The tank next to it, the pintail fairy rats and the hyantheas are actually trying to go through the glass to get to the to the shrimp that these guys are eating. All right, your turn next. Oh, the rats too. Look at the yellow chorus rats are going after it. All right, bud. All right, over here, over here, guys. Here, you got food right there. Go get it. Go ahead. There you go. And that one's a little late to the party. Cool, everybody's eating. And then the same thing over here. It's like every tank that I go down, the tank adjacent to it is like, where's ours, where's ours? All right, fathead Antheus, sunburst Antheus over here. Here's your food. And then of course the rhomboid wrasse, which is an unbelievable wrasse, really cool. There's actually a male and a female there. So hopefully we can sell those two to one customer because that'd be awesome. If a male and a female pair going into somebody's tank would look amazing. So they're eating and then let me go ahead and get the food for the rhomboid wrasse because they're feeling left out. There you go, come on guys. And they're going at it right now. They're eating like champs. What about the female? Females going after it, and so is the Anthias. Nice. Heck yeah. And we got a bunch of chromas here again. We got like a hundred of these chromas in this order. So you got the key to keeping these guys uh, doing well is to get them medicated as soon as they come in, but also feeding them like four or five times a day. Uh, it really is important to keep them fed and to get, hit them with that medication as soon as possible. All right, so we saw some of that cool stuff. I'm gonna pack up now and then let's go ahead and head to the customer's house and let's check out their bio cube and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about and what my beef is with this aquarium. So here we are at the customer's house and I got my little buddy with me here. Um, but this tank has given us all types of problems and we've finally kind of got it dialed in here. Um, we just added these two new uh, hammer frags right there, and you can see they're both doing really, really well. And then the other coral we added recently was this uh, Discosoma mushroom down here, this blue mushroom, which you can't really tell how blue it is under these lights, but um, that's doing really well too. I mean, when we first got this tank, it was an absolute nightmare. It was cyanobacteria, hair algae, everything. And if you look back here, I mean, it's, it's pretty immaculate. We've worked really hard to get it to this point. Um, now, as far as uh, livestock, we have that lightning maroon clownfish there. And then we have a hawkfish here as well, which that's the owner put that in there. We'll address that down the road. 
Uh, one of my pet peeves with these bio cubes are the lights. There's way too many whites and not enough blue, and the blues aren't strong enough, and they just don't get good color out of your corals. The other thing is, um, you can get a protein skimmer for it, and I think this protein skimmer works just as good as any protein skimmer for the size that it is. I mean, it, it does its job. It's a little bit tricky to dial it in, but it does its job. Then it trickles over from the intake over into this uh, filter floss or filter pad or whatever, and then you have your return section, which my problem with this is, the beef is, you just don't get enough flow out of that one return nozzle. Now, with the one thing I'll give them credit for is I do like this kind of tiered, uh, you know, layered uh, filtration. So you have your filter floss, you can put carbon, and you can put GFO in there. So I don't mind that at all. Then you have your lid and your little area right here where you can, uh, you know, feed your fish through and whatnot. The other thing that's kind of annoying about this tank is the lights are, are I mean, they're simple enough to kind of program, but anytime there's a power outage or anything like that, you lose your um, all your memory from your light schedule. And I don't know if we're the only ones that have that problem, but it seems to be a common uh, thing. Then here's a stand. It's pretty much your standard, you know, you put all your fish stuff under there, your food and all your extra fish tools. It's nice, it's it's okay, it's, it's well built. Um, you know, simplistic, No, I got no problems with that. Look, there are some legit things to say about this tank. I just personally feel like the cons outweigh the pros. Uh, for the most part. So let me get into some of my beasts with this uh, this tank, right? So you have this lid on the aquarium, which that's cool, right? Keeps the fish from jumping out. You need that. The problem is with a solid lid like that on top of your aquarium, it uh, is there's very bad gas exchange, which creates uh, really bad pH problems, which is very important when you're dealing with a saltwater aquarium. The other thing we've noticed is these aquariums usually run a little bit hot. And that probably has something to do with um, the lights are, you know, they're not the best lights and they run a little bit hotter. And then you have that lid on top of there and that uh, heat isn't able to escape. I think over the past uh, couple of years that I've been doing aquarium service, we've had uh, probably a total of maybe three or four customers that have had these aquariums and they've all had issues with hair algae or cyanobacteria. So I'm not sure why the customer put this cardboard here. My guess is that it's to keep this lid open so that the tank can vent and let some of that heat out. I just put some Kenya tree in here, which I think will do good in this aquarium. It'll help keep it clean. I put a couple pieces uh, to the left and then to the back there. Um, these tanks run a lot of white lights. So having the Kenya tree in there, it's got a nice purple pink color to it. So it'll look really good. Now this tank, when we first took it over, was just littered with Aptasia everywhere. And I think that's why things like that Mohawk weren't doing really well. And that's good to see that it's starting to come back. But um, we can't put peppermint shrimp in here because the hawkfish. So I'll just try to hit it with some F Aptasia like I've been doing. See that leather coral there? That's been in here for a long time. And it's just not doing great. But um, I'm not really worried about that. I'm really only trying to focus on the stuff we're putting in here now, not the stuff that was in here before. Um, that's going to give me a better idea how the tank's going to do. So I am encouraged with the steps we've been making. Now we're here once every two weeks, but I do believe with the customer's help and the prop, proper tank husbandry, um, we can make this tank look great. I'm encouraged by the corals that are in here and how they look. Now I'm not thrilled with how they look under this light and how the light affects them, but I'm really excited for the future and what we can do with this aquarium. So I'm back at the shop now, and I just wanted to close with Look, some of the pros of this aquarium is it's number one, it's reasonably priced when you compare it to other tanks on the market. It's it's probably the biggest reason why people buy it. It comes with everything you need. So for somebody that's just getting into the aquarium hobby, it's very simple, you, you plug and play. And that's really important because it keeps it simple and a lot of people are intimidated by saltwater aquariums. So if it's plug and play, it's perfect. Now my biggest beef with the aquarium is the lighting system. That's a big problem. Now, you can, if you want to keep corals, you can probably keep uh, some softies, no problem. I think it's more geared towards soft corals, which if you're a beginner, you start with soft corals, not a bad thing, right? Now, the reason why they're probably so popular is because of the price point. It comes with everything and the price is really good when you compare it to other tanks at size. I completely understand that and I understand people are on a budget. But anyways, that's my hot take. Let me know what you guys think uh, in the comments. Have you had this tank? Uh, what was your experience like? I'd love to hear it. Uh, just any feedback is kind of cool. Let's keep the conversation open and respectful and let's bounce ideas off each other. That's the whole reason why I created this channel was to kind of talk and get things out in the open. Uh, for me, it's fun to share information and learn from each other. So with that being said, I got to go because I got more jobs. I can't be messing around with y'all anymore. I got to go. Um, I'll see you in the next one.